Hello and welcome to the program. This April, the Ukrainian Ministry of Health has launched a healthcare reform campaign. This reform aims to bring Ukrainian healthcare closer to Western standards. Now, so how successful is this reform so far? And what else needs to be done to achieve the announced goals? To answer these questions, joining us in the studio today is Svetlana Bubenchikova, manager of the medical group of the reanimation package of reforms. Hello and thank you for joining us today. Hello. So the first and one of the key points of the reform is switching from, e, uh, from paper form, which is the old system, to e-declarations to collect the data from, uh, from the patients. But as of today, some, hosp some hospitals said they don't have the equipment, uh, mm -hmm. they don't have the proper computer, and how to ensure that hospitals receive the proper equipment? Uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, I think it's uh, a good um, uh, question to um, talk because uh, uh, if we um, see our, um, on equipment of our medical uh, care system, uh, we can see that in a big city uh, like Kiev, for example, yes, uh, this is uh, uh, have a good lever, uh, and every uh, clinic and government or not government uh, has a computer system to provide uh, e declarations uh, in the uh, this structure. If we talk about uh, smaller cities, so. Uh, there are uh, uh, numerous of uh, citizens are uh, not so uh, big like in Kiev, uh, and I think they uh, not need uh, such powerful equipment for providing this system uh, at this place. But uh, for another part, uh, they have every uh, medical clinic, uh, government clinic, uh, have. Um, uh, second uh, budget uh, from um, charity uh, donations of patients. We all knew about this. So uh, I can say that authorities of these clinics should think how they can change and reorganize. Every uh, clinic uh, has a um, budget from the government and they have a second budget from the charity donations of patients. So uh, they can uh, they're, they're see free. this mm. money and uh, uh, they can think and choose uh, to buy uh, or update their technical opportunity to provide e-health uh, in their clinics. But um, if I may, what are the guarantees that these clinics, because they're going to be more autonomous, mm -hmm. um, what are the guarantees that these funds, these charity funds, won't disappear? You know, and that, that these funds will be allocated to the update of new equipment. Is there an organism, is there a control over this, this, um, these funds? Actually, uh, it's difficult to control these funds, uh, but uh, I want to uh, stop on um, such words like um, responsibility. The um, director or authority of clinic uh, have responsibility for providing this uh, procedure uh, in uh, their uh, clinics. Uh, the second uh, part is that we have a loss of uh, village medicine and there is a big budget to provide a new equipment system and uh, uh, update uh, technical system in uh, clinics uh, which are located in villages. So today they have all opportunities to uh, start e-health, providing e-health with uh, government budget, with uh, a reorganization of uh, the system that they have, and uh, to use uh, charity funds from the patients. Uh, now that um, I understand this idea, and I understand this idea of a uh, uh, responsibility, of course, but when it comes to, and especially with the funds dedicated, when it comes, there has been con some concern then s that some doctors and even some directors of hospital maybe sometimes are underpaid, and it's another 
uh, problem that can lead to corruption. Once and again, is there any, in the reform in the whole, because it's a big reform, mm -hmm. um, is there any structure able to see, to oversee, to monitor that maybe in one, in one year, this funds, okay, so we, then we have new equipment and things like that. Is there someone who can, you know, say, yes, in this village, in these areas, it, there has been progress? Mm -hmm. uh, the main monitor uh, is uh, government and patients. Uh, government can see uh, how they work with uh, government budget, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, how they... Um, deal with uh, charity funds um, it's a gray it's, yes it's, it's difficult it's difficult uh, but it's possible uh, and uh, uh, this role is for um, public is for community and when i like a patient uh, uh, came to my doctor and uh, if i see uh, something wrong things I can uh, call or sign to healthcare uh, agency and uh, um, bring this information for them. Now, that's interesting that you raised um, the the idea of patient, because yes, uh, there is this. There has been this slogan during the campaign for the healthcare reform. So the money follows the patient. Mm -hmm. um, and this reform seems more focused on the patient and then uh, m more, that, more than, than the medical structure. How does it change with the old system? How, like, will it, how will it help to get out of the whole system? And is it, how is it closer to Western standards? Mm, we should understand that this year is a year of reform um, of uh, first level of healthcare system. So uh, today, Every patient uh, have a possibility to um, choose their um, family doctor uh, or doctor for his or her child. Uh, the difference between previous system and uh, the reform system uh, is in um, transparency relationships between patients and doctors. Patients has uh, more opportunity to be more free because today it's not matter when uh, where I have official registration. I can choose my doctor uh, everywhere I um, want. So if I'm sick somewhere, I can go to this doctor and go and say. Yes, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's uh, should to be comfortable for patient. For example, I live in one uh, part of city and my doctor uh, live in uh, and work in mm -hmm. uh, another I can sign declaration with that family doctor that I need uh, and that I like. So um, that's for the in, we are on the first months of this of this reform. Um, what's what's the next step of this reform after mm -hmm. that? So we're we're like focusing now on the patient um, family family doctors. What's next? What's the next step? Mm -hmm. So uh, the medical uh, clinics, um, which will sign declaration uh, with patients and uh, family doctors with patients uh, till the 1st uh, June. So they uh, can get money from the government budget in July. It uh, will be a first uh, payments for the medical new medical uh, system. Uh, then uh, we can um, see uh, several um, Steps. Mm, steps, yes, thank you. Uh, and every, uh, I don't know, maybe one or two months, uh, National Healthcare Agency will collect this information about signing declaration and then will um, do payments for other and other patients. Uh, in uh, 2019, we'll... Uh, we will face with reformed uh, the second uh, uh, level of medicine and the next year uh, it will be for the third 
level of medicine. Okay, thank you. So that's gonna. So I guess we're gonna fl closely follow these uh, steps. Thank you for uh, joining us in the studio. It was a pleasure. Thank you too. Uh, that was Fitlana Bencikova, manager of the medical group of the reanimation package of reform. Thank you for watching the program. Stay tuned for the rest.